r slash ask reddit. People are old enough to remember the 11th of September attacks. What was the day like? I watched almost the whole thing from across the river in NJ. It was ducked up. At the time work had me out and about on the road. And I was trying to head up to North Bergen. I wasn't listening to the radio so I had no clue what was happening. I was just north of the Lincoln Tunnel. Trying to make my way. Traffic just stopped. I was getting frustrated. But in a creepy way I started looking around at the drivers of other cars. There were looks of shock. Some looked ill. And one car was full of people crying. There was also a sense of I have to get out of here in some of the drivers. This made me put on the radio. I found a spot to park. And just got out of my car. I walked to the river. And just sat there 4 hours by myself. Watched both buildings fall. The strangest part was how everything went from hectic to being still. When I first got out of my car. There was a lot of shouting and chaos as emergency vehicles were fighting their way up and down the street. Then it was just quiet. All the news helicopters went away. The sirens were so far off in the distance. Traffic eased. And the roads became quiet. I could hear the birds chirping away and the river lapping against the pier. It was surreal. I never made it to my destination. I just went home in a fog. I do not remember the drive at all. It was just dark when I got there is all I can remember. Seems like such a surreal experience. You're watching and thinking about how much this is going to change the world while nature doesn't give a duck and keeps doing nature hit. My father was in Newark at that time working on one of the highways they were building near the airport. He said he watched the whole thing unfold before his eyes. That's crazy as hell to be right there. I was an elementary school student in Brooklyn NY at the time and that particular day I really didn't want to go to school. I don't remember exactly why not but it was probably because I had some homework due that I didn't complete and I didn't want to get shamed in front of the class. My dad worked at the World Trade Center at the time and he was the one who brought me to school every day. Because I was being a little hit that day. He ended up being a couple of hours late to work. When he finally did get me to go to school. The school day started out relatively normally. We were all in class when one of the homeroom teachers from the class over came in and turned on our TV. Everybody was really quiet all of a sudden and the teachers started asking us if any of us had parents who worked in the WTC. I and a couple of other kids raised our hands and the teacher looked really solemnly at us and, if I remember correctly, actually tid up a bit. I remember being really worried and sad. I didn't really fully understand what was happening. But because the teachers looked really upset. I got really upset. About an hour later. My mom came to pick me up from school and we drove to my aunt's house where we were all gathered together and we waited to get a call or anything from my dad. Everybody was really quiet and sad with the exception of my aunts who were trying to entertain me while my mom was trying to hide her crying. Then suddenly. We get a call from my dad and he's perfectly fine. Turns out me being a little hit in the morning made him just late enough to have arrived at the building after the planes already hit so he never entered the building and instead ran far away. Just curious. Did your father ever acknowledge that you being a little hit that morning saved his life? Yeah he did. My whole family was thankful I chose that particular morning to be a little hit. I did not feel old this morning but I do now. Thanks. Anyway. I was in high school. The best way to describe the feeling for someone who was not directly affected by it not in New York is surreal. It was kind of this moment of being in classes and hearing about it. Basically everything stopped. I was in German class and it was like huh. Well. Turn on the TV. I spend half of the day split between learning things and watching the news. So. I was in grade school when this happened and had a similar day like you. But it got me wondering. Is this taught in history books now? Everything was still fresh and going on for us. But is it taught now? Are we old enough to have lived through something in a history book? Oh man. That really made me think about it. I would assume any modern history course in the US would cover it. I would be very curious to see how much school history textbooks would cover it. They tend to gloss over events more than delve into them. According to one survey. Only about 20 states include anything in depth about the events of that fateful day in their high school social studies curriculum. NPR org link. That was 2016. 
I was in the army. And a member of a rapid deployment unit. By 10 a.m. We were locked and loaded. Sitting in an undisclosed military hangar. Waiting to be deployed. I had a big meeting off base that afternoon. Anyway, that didn't happen. Rather unusual to have to pass through multiple machine gun nest checkpoints on the way back into the base once the lockdown was over. Uh, sitting in an undisclosed military hangar. Come on buddy you can tell me. New Yorker here. The best way to describe it was surreal. I was in 11th grade. Everyone was just sitting in their homerooms watching everything go down on TV. Feeling progressively hit here as people kept getting called into the office and not coming back. My father was a paramedic at the time and he missed being incinerated during the collapse by a matter of inches. Luckily my teenage brain didn't really think that he would be at risk. Otherwise I would have been freaking out even more. Also the bus took 3 hours to get home in what is normally a 30 minute ride. My grandma has a similar story. But with JFK. During passing period. A girl with a portable radio heard the news and went to the principal who put the radio on the PA and eventually let students out early since classes weren't happening anymore. Many parents forgot to pick up their kids up cause they were all crying at the TV or radio. My dad was in 5th or 6th grade when JFK was shot. He remembers them announcing it over the PA. And the classroom just erupting into sobs. He also recalled one of the boys angrily slamming his fists on the desk. Declaring he was going to go kill the guy who did that to Mrs. Kennedy. Got. I'm gonna have to let my kid interview me about this for some school project someday. Aren't I? But seriously. I was a freshman in college. Lived in the dorm with a potluck roommate that I barely knew. It was still the beginning of the semester. I got up like any other morning. Took a shower in the gross common bathroom. When I was brushing my teeth. My roommate comes in and says some dumbass just flew a jet into the World Trade Center. At this point. We didn't know it was a deliberate attack. I went back to our room and turned the TV on just in time to watch the second plane hit. Obviously I knew immediately what was happening. But the actual significance had yet to dawn on me. So I went to class. Most of my professors just turned on the nearest TV. Or dismissed us immediately. But I did have one arrogant anthropology teacher who literally though her class was more important than watching history unfold. And she made us sit through a 45 minute lecture. Cell phones back then were not what they are now. So we didn't know what was going on. And weren't paying any attention. Later that day. The gasoline scare struck my town. I. Like so many idiots. Queued up to get what I was sure was the last tank of gas I'd ever get before the apocalypse struck. I watched the owner of the station change the first number of the gas price from a 1 to a 3. I paid it. Watch the news for the next week. Hardly left the dorm room. The rest is a blur. Honestly. But it was surreal. I totally got swept up in the nationalist rhetoric of the time. Bought an American flag sticker for my car. Etc. Then everything went to hell over the next few years. And welp. Here we are. What was the reason for the rush for fuel? Was it from a sense that society was about to collapse? Two fears. That our oil reserves were a target for attack. And the closing of the New York Mercantile Exchange. Among the immediate effects of the attack on the World Trade Center was the closing of the New York Mercantile Exchange, NYMEX, and the possibility that oil market participants, producers, refiners, marketers, and traders would not have one of their bases for setting prices in their contracts and other transactions. The NYMEX is a major oil trading market that serves as a mechanism for the important function of price discovery the determination of current and future prices. Oil industry entities use as reference points publicly visible and instantly available prices established in markets such as NYMEX. Where market and political developments are reflected almost instantaneously in prices. Embodying the collective judgment of the market participants. However. Other commodity and futures markets filled in for NYMEX. And. To some extent. The price discovery function shifted to the spot market. Source. Snopes and a report to Congress about the effects and possible long-term effects of the attacks from September 2002. I just found my school journal entry from the day after 9 stroke 11 the other day. The green writing was my teacher. I was 9. 
Yes I had terrible spelling for a 9 year old. Your teacher's comment is so sweet. It's great when teachers care about their students well being. Well. You have better handwriting than me. My younger brother was about your age when it happened. I remember he got really sad and went up to the jungle gym fort we had to cry about all the firefighters who had died. Horrific and surreal. I'm 54. I worked in Manhattan up until April of 2001. At which time I took a transfer out to Long Island. I had taken that day off. I think it was a Tuesday. The wife and I slept in. Fooled around and then started our day. She was out in the kitchen making us some breakfast when I turned on the television. The TV showed one of the towers. Smoking heavily. For some reason. I kept thinking no. This is wrong. This already happened. I had the 1993 attack. They blew up a truck bomb in the basement. Stuck in my head. That's what the images they were showing reminded me of. Then the second plane came in. To this day. When I think of the horror the people in the towers and the passengers in those jetliners must have experienced when the plane was approaching the tower shakes me to the core. For a few brief moments. They knew. I can't wrap my head around it. The horror of it is beyond me. The next few weeks were even worse. Yes thousands of people died that day. But the effect of those deaths wasn't really evident for some time. My wife was a nurse. Most of her friends were nurses. For whatever reason. A lot of nurses are married to cops and firefighters and other emergency services personnel. We went to a lot of funeral in the weeks following 9 stroke 11. And it was there that I really saw the effects of those deaths. Wives bereft of their husbands. Children too young to really understand what had happened who now had nothing to remember their fathers by but a badge. And mothers and fathers that had lost their sons. So many futures shattered in an instant and left in ruins. The only consolation that many of them received was a line I heard over and over and over. Your father died a hero. Your son died a hero. Your husband died a hero. Over and over. It just rips the heart out of me still. I was in second grade. My dad is a New York City firefighter. At the time he had been working studying a lot as he was trying to get promoted so he wasn't around that much. I specifically remember going to school in the morning and my mom telling me that dad will be home later since grandma and grandpa were coming over for dinner. I was super pumped because I used to watch my dad play Ocarina of Time and it was awesome. When I got home from school I immediately asked my mom where my dad was but my grandpa, who was watching the towers go down on the news, pointed at the TV and said there. I told him that my dad can't be in a movie and he told me it wasn't a movie. I spent the rest of the day sitting in front of the door waiting for my dad to get home. When he finally did late that night. I hugged him. Held on. And cried more than I ever did in my whole life. It was the first time I really understood what death was and how it affected people since a lot of his friends died that day. Has he been alright in the years since? I always find it especially hard to hear the stories of people who were just trying to help that day and years later develop severe lung problems or other effects from the ash and burning material at the site. Yep. Made me cry. Holy hit. I was halfway across the country and remember that day. But actually having family involved must have been crazy. I'm so glad he made it out. On the 11th of September. 2001. I was in my office at the Pentagon when a plane crashed into the building. I was in the E-ring. Just round the corner from where the plane hit. It was a pretty orderly evacuation. They sent everyone out onto the parade grounds outside the building. Which was on the opposite side of the impact. I survived because of the fact that the location of impact. While only about 200 yards from my office. Happened in the empty wedge of the building that had recently wrapped up renovations that included new blast doors walls. All new windows. And reinforced framing throughout that section. Our office was scheduled to move into the new section in the following month. BTW. It was a plane. Any missile big enough to leave a hole the size of the one the plane left. Would have obliterated a much larger section of that building. As a side note. If that guy had nosed down into the central courtyard. We might not be having this conversation. Glad you're alive. My co-worker tried arguing recently that 9 stroke 11 wasn't real because nobody died in the pentagon and that means it had to be planned. 
I finally told him to go duck himself when he wouldn't listen to reason. He demanded that I apologize for telling him to go duck himself because it was disrespectful. So I doubled down. Duck you. Almost 200 people died. Seriously. Go duck yourself. That's not only factually wrong. But it's dangerous thinking. It's idiotic conspiracy theories. And it's disrespectful to the people who lost their lives. I'll disrespect you all I want for that. Then I went on my break because I was too pissed to deal with customers. I too have friends who lost family at the Pentagon and the WTC. When I came back he apologized for being an idiot. He decided to actually look it up and sure enough. Wikipedia confirms 184 people died in the building and in the plane. I hate conspiracy theorists. As someone who was there how does it make you feel when people say it's fake and staged? It would really piss me off if I lived through something like that and someone tried to say it was all staged. In my town. It was stone quiet. Streets normally bustling with activity, either heading to work, going up to the university, whatever, were empty and desolate. I rode my bike to work to save on gas money since it was only 3 miles or so away. I got to work, I worked at an inbound call center at the time. And no one was at their desk. Everyone was huddled around the TV in the break room. I made it in just as Tower 2 came down. The muffled gasps and sobs were like donkey kicks to the gut. I couldn't take it. I pulled out my cell phone and called the front desk and told them I wouldn't be working. The girl completely understood. I walked back to my cube where I had dropped off my backpack. Told my manager what my decision was. Gave her a hug. And headed out. Same quiet. Same desolation. Got home. Held my wife tightly. And hunkered down on the couch to watch the news for the rest of the day. Edit. To OP. I don't know how old you are. But if you're having to ask what it was like. My guess is that you're fairly young. Thank you for caring enough to ask for first hand experiences of what the day was like. I was working for IBM in a call center taking orders for laptops and PC equipment from the various resellers and distributors. The day of the attack was quiet and the phone stopped ringing entirely. We all just stood around watching the TV in the commons room. Later that day IBM put out a corporate wide email and said that all corporate functions and resources were going to be dedicated to supporting the customers directly impacted by the attacks. The next day. The guy who sat next to me got an order for 8000 laptops for Washington Mutual Bank. They were relocating all their Wall Street employees to a DR site in New Jersey. Normally a big order would be a 200-300 laptops and you would expect to wait 3-4 weeks because IBM never kept inventory of that stuff and shipped everything from the factory in Guadalajara, Mexico. IBM shipped all 8000 laptops in 72 hours. Ro. I was in high school. I remember being interested. A little worried about what may be coming next. Everyone was trying to figure out what was going on and news just kept rolling in. All classes obviously turned into just everyone watching the news. And going to the internet for news. Also the Slayer album God Hates Us All came out that day. Which I kept thinking about because it seemed fitting. Also also. Duck 911. That hit Ducked America up hard. This place has been extra jacked since then. Those Ducko terrorists accomplished their mission. Assholes. Seriously. I remember someone saying we were two different countries. And now we are always going to be America after 9 stroke 11. That seems to happen when an event like that strikes. I hear people say all the time that Sweden changed in the same way 1986 when its prime minister was shot on an open street. The killer was never caught. It changed Sweden forever. This is incredible. Thank you for your story. Have you had any health consequences from the dust debris? Many are talking about watching the towers on the news. But not mentioning the Pentagon. Those of us in the DC area were more directly affected by that and it's what I remember most. Same here. I was a kid. But my dad worked downtown as a photographer for the Smithsonian. Jackass didn't come home right away. Opting to take pictures instead. I love my father but we were pretty worried. I'm Australian. And I was maybe 10 at the time. I remember my best friend was staying over that night. 
and we were sitting in front of the TV with my family eating pizza when the news broke. Me. My friend. And my brother didn't really understand what was going on. But my parents were freaking out. We were just annoyed that we couldn't watch Star Trek. About a week later. My brother's school penpal from the US sent a letter telling him that his dad had died in the attack. Aussie here also. I was a teen and I can't remember if Australian TV was swapped to the American coverage before or after the second tower was it. I know you were even younger. But do you remember? I have vivid memories of watching the second tower being hit but can't tell whether they were when it happened or after. I was almost 25 at the time and remember it clearly. It was about 11.30pm local time and I had just finished a session of Final Fantasy IX. Listening to Tool's Lateralus album. I turned the PlayStation off intending to go to bed. But I switched the TV to channel 10 and caught the breaking news of the first plane. I sat and watched for a while thinking about how someone could duck up that badly and was watching live as the second plane hit. I woke my girlfriend up to tell her what had happened. And we sat up past dawn watching the coverage. Canadian here, I didn't fully grasp the significance of it. I was 13 and remember thinking okay there's news on the TV every day about bombings and attacks all over the world. Why is this one such a big deal? I didn't understand that stuff like this just didn't happen in the US the way it did in other places on earth. Our English teacher was in the middle of a lesson. Another teacher came in and then they stopped teaching and turned on the television in the room and we all watched quietly. I don't think my friends talked about it much. Though my parents were talking about it when I got home. If anyone still doesn't grasp the significance it also has to do with the amount, type, and method of damage. To my knowledge nothing close to this scale. Sophistication. And success in causing material damage has been accomplished by terrorists before or since. These were some of the tallest, largest, and sturdiest buildings in the world. Worse yet was an undertone that still rarely gets discussed publicly. The thought that to prevent something like this we might need to shoot down a plane full of innocent people. Many people that day thought the plane that went down in PA was shot down. Later we found out the flight 93 passengers fought back once they realized their plane was going to be used as a guided missile but most of us fully believed we might have to shoot. There were a lot of false positives that day. I was in the US Army stationed at a fort in the US. I worked for Garrison Command, the office in charge of the fort. It has about 15 people in it. It looks like any office really but we have a conference room with a large computer TV every day we play the news on it. So when the first plane hit we heard about it pretty fast. We were shocked trying to figure out how that could happen. What was wrong with the plane? We did our work while watching the news and then the second plane hit. What the hell is going on? The news said something about maybe it was an attack. And I remembered that my brother-in-law was going to the towers that day, his company had their office there. Next our commander told us we on alerts and had to lock down the fort nobody allow on or off the post. Thing is there was no pre-made plan for that so we would have to make it up as we go. Bouncing ideas off each other as we went. We had soldiers training in the woods and at target ranges we called them all back. The MPs were told no cars in or out but they were low on manpower for that so we had a couple infantry units help them. The phone never stopped ringing everyone wanted answers. Every time we thought we starting to get control some new problem came up. All the local schools closed army kids went to those how would they get home. We decided to put an MP on any bus that had to drop off kids on post. We had lots of civilian workers what do we do about them? They were great no complaining just waiting. We had trucks blocking all the gates we started taking care rails, cement walls, from places all over the post to the gates. We needed better lighting at the gate for the night hours. How to rotate troops and MPs. For 3 days we stayed in that building getting sleep on our chairs if we could. Can't remember eating anything. My teenage daughter was home alone her mom worked in the same building I did so we called often but she had everything she needed, so lock the doors and stay inside. Found out my brother-in-law's flight was cancelled or he would have been in the towers at the time. When my wife and I did get to go home we were wiped out. Check the kid. Eat. Wash. Sleep. Go back to work in 8 hours. It would be weeks before we could get back to something like normal. 
Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Reddit Queen for the best daily content.